From Genesis we know that humanity was made in God's image. Paul likewise tells us that the Godhead reveals its image and power to us through the things that were made at creation. He says, Understanding this is important in order to comprehend the gospel of righteousness through faith. Romans 1 verses 16, 21. Romans 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Adam and Eve were made in God's image. The Hebrew word translated as God here is Elohim. It has the feminine base, Eloah, and the masculine plural ending, Im. Elohim is a plural word, hence the possessive pronoun, our, before image. The only thing that was not good at the time of creation was for man to be alone. Genesis 2.18 since God is good, Luke 18, 19, the Godhead must be both male and female or God would be incriminating his own situation. God identifies himself as a father who has a begotten son, Jesus. This implies a mother or the language is arbitrary and not relatable. When we delve into the sacred pages of the Bible, we encounter wisdom not as a mere abstract idea but as a vital and nurturing figure. This portrayal invites us to explore a profound understanding of wisdom that transcends the conventional. The Book of Proverbs, rich in wisdom literature, often presents wisdom as a woman. In Hebrew the word for wisdom is chokma, a feminine noun. This linguistic choice is not accidental. It echoes the feminine nature of wisdom as described in the scriptures. In Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom is personified, speaking in the first person and interacting directly with humanity. She calls out to mankind, offering guidance and counsel, she is depicted as a nurturing figure, ever ready to share her insights with those who seek her. This portrayal underscores the importance of wisdom in our lives, not merely as knowledge to be acquired but as guidance to be embraced. The concept of wisdom goes beyond the feminine personification, in fact it's a key part of the divine godhead. It's interesting to note that the ancient sages viewed wisdom as a divine attribute, an integral part of God's nature. This view is not merely a philosophical speculation but a scriptural revelation. The Bible in its poetic and metaphorical language presents wisdom not just as an attribute but as a divine persona. This persona is not separate from God but is an essential aspect of the divine nature. In the wisdom literature we find wisdom portrayed as a divine figure who was with God from the beginning, participating in the creation of the world. So, wisdom in the Bible is more than just a concept or a character trait. It's a divine persona, a nurturing figure, and a vital part of the Godhead. As we delve deeper, we find that wisdom is not just a concept but a personification, a member of the Godhead. Could it be possible that the Holy Spirit, a crucial part of the Godhead, is represented by wisdom? This question may seem strange, perhaps even radical, but let's delve into it together. In the scriptures we often see wisdom personified as a woman. In Proverbs, for instance, she is depicted as a nurturing figure, calling out to the people, offering guidance, and even preparing a feast. This feminine portrayal of wisdom might seem merely symbolic, but when we examine it in the light of the Holy Spirit, a fascinating correlation emerges. The Holy Spirit, as we know, is an essential part of the Godhead, but unlike the Father and the Son, we often struggle to understand its nature. Could it be that wisdom, with her feminine characteristics, offers us a glimpse into the heart of the Holy Spirit? To further explore this idea, let's turn to the New Testament. Here we find references to being born again, a process that involves the Holy Spirit. Isn't it intriguing that birth, a profoundly feminine act, is associated with the Holy Spirit's work in our lives? This connection suggests a nurturing, motherly aspect to the Holy Spirit, much like that of wisdom. Moreover, in the Greek language, the word for wisdom is Sophia. Now, Sophia is a feminine noun, a detail that seems too significant to be mere coincidence. Could this be another hint at the Holy Spirit's feminine nature as represented by wisdom? As we ponder these connections, we begin to see that wisdom or Sophia is more than an abstract concept or a moral guide. She might indeed be a representation of the Holy Spirit, a feminine member of the Godhead, distinct from Jesus. So, where does this leave us? Well, it invites us to view the Holy Spirit through a new lens, one that emphasizes its nurturing motherly nature. It encourages us to seek wisdom, 
or Sophia, as we would a loving mother guiding us through life's challenges and helping us grow spiritually. Wisdom, it seems, plays a far more significant role in our spiritual journey than we might have first thought. What if we started to understand and relate to the Holy Spirit in a new way, as a motherly figure, essential for spiritual growth and connection? The Holy Spirit is a person who gently guides us through our spiritual growth. This is the essence of wisdom in the biblical context. It's an understanding that transcends the traditional, often masculine, depictions of the divine. By embracing this view, we open a new avenue of spiritual connection, one that is deeply rooted in care, understanding, and guidance. Think about the role of a mother. She is with us every day of our lives to cleanse us and teach heavenly things. She nurtures, teaches, and guides her children, helping them grow and navigate the world. Now imagine viewing the Holy Spirit through this lens. As wisdom, she becomes a spiritual mother, guiding us with love, imparting knowledge, and helping us make wise decisions in our life. This perspective can drastically change our spiritual practices. Our prayers might become conversations, our worship an expression of gratitude, and our spiritual growth a journey of learning and understanding. It brings a sense of warmth and intimacy to our relationship with the divine, making it more personal and profound. When we view wisdom as the Holy Spirit, we also start to see the world around us in a different light. We begin to recognize the divine's wisdom in everything, from the smallest leaf to the grandest mountain. We start to understand that all of creation is imbued with a profound wisdom that we can learn from if we simply open our hearts and minds. Embracing wisdom as the Holy Spirit invites us to cultivate a deeper, more nurturing relationship with the divine. It encourages us to seek wisdom in all aspects of our lives and to trust in the guidance and love of our spiritual mother. Indeed, wisdom is not just an abstract idea but a nurturing presence that guides and shapes our spiritual journey. Imagine a world where we all embraced wisdom, where the Holy Spirit was not just an abstract concept but a nurturing presence in our lives. This is a world where the divine feminine embodied by wisdom guides us in our spiritual journey. Let's recap. Throughout this exploration, we've unveiled wisdom, a feminine figure, as a distinct member of the Godhead. We've learned how wisdom and the Holy Spirit intertwine in scripture, painting a picture of a nurturing motherly figure essential for spiritual growth. And we've delved deep into the idea of embracing wisdom, inviting her guidance into our lives. Understanding wisdom as the Holy Spirit has the power to transform our spiritual journey. It encourages us to approach our faith with the same nurturing, patient, and wise attributes that wisdom embodies. It allows us to see the Holy Spirit not as an abstract entity, but as a personal guide, helping us navigate our spiritual path. So far we can see from scripture that wisdom is the Holy Spirit, wisdom sends and speaks through prophets, wisdom is someone other than Jesus, and Jesus refers to wisdom as feminine. In the end, wisdom is not just a woman named in the Bible, but a divine presence that can guide us towards a deeper understanding of our faith and world. We have reached the end of this study. I hope it will help you better understand the person of the other comforter. For more wisdom from above, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video.